Hi, let's talk about activation energy. Uh, activation energy is crucial when we are talking about rate. The activation energy is the minimum energy required for reactants to change to products. You have to have so much energy in order for the reactants to break. You'll recall from the collision theory, we need two things. Number one, proper orientation of reactants when they hit, <clears throat> excuse me. And number two, you need enough energy. Well, that enough energy is activation energy. Our symbol for activation energy is a capital E with a lowercase a. Now, there are two ways that we can describe this with diagrams. One is with an endothermic and the other is with an exothermic diagram. Um, so I've written a generic equation up here. Reactants A plus B yield product C plus D. Let's look at exothermic first. So here's how you draw it. Uh, we're going to begin with our reactants A and B, and we're going to end with our product C and D. Now notice this hump right here. That is indicating the amount of energy, minimum energy, that's required for the reactants to break bonds and then form bonds to make the products. That sensation of reactants breaking, bonds forming for products happens right there at the apex, the very, very top. Now, in AP, they call it transition state. <clears throat> I've seen books that call it transition state, and I've equally, um, with same frequency, seen books call it the activated complex. So I put that in parentheses just in case your professor, teacher, textbook uses the term activated complex. They are the same thing. This is going to be that moment where reactants break and then bonds formed form for the products. It is extremely unstable. Um, here's a true fact. It is so unstable and so crazy fast that we haven't been able to collect significant data at all. We honestly, for everything that we know, we really don't know how bonds break and how bonds form because it happens so fast right there at that transition state. Um, so minimum energy. Now you could put more energy in than with the minimum that's required. That's just going to make the reaction go faster because you have enough energy, enough energy, enough energy for all those trillions of little molecules to react with each other. Um, but once two molecules, they have enough energy, they have that proper orientation, boom, it's done. They'll react really, really fast right there. Now, when bonds are formed, it creates a stability. There's a stability when those bonds are formed. And this is indicating the energy that's released when those bonds are formed. Um, so the energy released right here, this long arrow, that's called the activation energy reverse. Amount of energy released when the products are formed. Now there's another reason, and I think this really makes sense why this is called the E of A reverse. Let's go backwards. Let's go backwards. Let's make products become reactants. So I go from here, put an arrow this way, go from products back to reactants. This shows us the energy that we have to put into it to get back to that transition state. So now we're going to put energy in, break the C and D bonds, form A and B bonds, and then that's the energy that's released, the stability when A and B would be formed. So we could also look at this, well, let's go backwards. And that's the energy that you'd have to put into it. Minimum energy you put into products going back to those reactants. Now, really cool connection. Why we can say this is exothermic. Okay, this is the energy that you put in. Here's the energy that's released when those products are formed. If you subtract that, the amount of energy that you put in from the amount of energy that's released, that difference is a net energy released and that is your enthalpy for the reaction. The delta H for this whole reaction, if this was this reaction, I put delta H negative whatever that value is, this right here. Now, that I know can be a little obscure. So I have a little example for you. When I was in fifth grade, I was in 4-H and I had to sew an apron. Still have the apron, really cute little red gingham apron. Walk this with me and it's going to help this make sense. Let's pretend that I went and bought my material for $5. That's the money that I put in, the energy that I put in. Then I take all of my material, I sew it with the cute little red ribbon and the um, white eyelet lace. I sew it, that's my transition state. And then I look at this beautiful apron and I said, hey, let's sell this. And I sell it for $15. Okay, that's the money I get out of it. I sold that for $15. Now, the difference of what I put into it, $5. Subtract the difference I got out, $15. That's my delta H. I made $10 profit 
that delta H is like the profit, the net profit that you would make. So maybe that little, I'm hopeful, that little apron example will help you understand how to interpret that activation energy diagram. Okay, so now let's look at an endothermic reaction. So here, notice we put a huge amount of energy in for the activation energy. The minimum energy required for reactants to break and bonds to form, substantial, okay, large. So we put in this minimum energy, which is actually quite a bit. We have the transition state, so reactants break bonds, the products form bonds really fast, really unstable up here at the transition state. You gain the stability of the products and those that releases energy, but the energy is small. So your E of A reverse, the amount of energy released from the stability of products being formed is smaller than the energy required, um, what's put in for those reactants to break and bonds to form. Um, so notice E of A is small. Um, e of A reverse is small. Not all of energy is released when products are formed. Huge amount of energy is put in um, for your, your activation energy. So the difference, the energy that you put in, subtracting the energy that you get out leaves you with a cost. We had a net, we had to put energy in, that is endothermic. Absorb, require energy, that would be a positive delta H. So if this reaction was this diagram right here, I do delta H positive, whatever that number was. Um, okay, so let's use our apron example on this. Let's say that I go and I pay $5. So I've got my $5 um, for my material. Uh, we go ahead and I sew it. Again, I put on the red ri ribbon and the white eyelet lace on this cute little uh, red and white gingham material. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to sell this. Well, I try and I try. I can't sell it. So finally, I sell it for a dollar. Oh, so sad. It must have been an ugly apron. So I put $5 in. I got $1 out. So the money I put in five minus the money I got, I received for it, $1, means it cost me $4. That was a $4 loss. That's the endothermic. It cost us energy. We had to put more energy into it than the amount of energy that came out. So there's your endothermic reaction. So activation energy. Um, now, little, little connection. I wanna show you just really fast. And if you haven't watched the, um, the video on catalysis, little reminder, when you add a catalyst, I went to do it over here. It decreases the activation energy by, um, there we go, by changing the pathway. So sometimes you'll see another line on here and it will say E of A catalyzed. E of A catalyzed. That just means we added a, cat a catalyst to the reaction and it decreased the activation energy. So the whole reaction will go faster. Just wanted to add that here. And if you haven't watched the video on catalysis, take a look at that video under the rate playlist. Okay, nice. Have a great day. Activation energy.